Well, 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 salutations, kindred spirits. Here we are. It's day two. Can't believe we've made it this far already. <laughs> day two, trick day, May. <clears throat> Today we're doing rope magic. Today we're doing rope tricks. I've got a pretty cool agenda planned, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And I could be, because quite often I am mistaken about things. I'm going to get this one out of the way. Get the hard work done. I have to do my stand-up. Three times a day, I elevate off the desk. Here's the first one. This is a classic handling... No. <laughs> this is a new handling for a classic bit of ropeology. The one-handed rope knot. The one-handed rope knot. That's been your trick a day may magic experience. Tune in tomorrow. See you guys next time. What's he doing here? <clears throat> hey, kindred spirits, I see you out there. Phoenix, John, Matthew, Jeff, Rabbi Itz, Tim Askins. What's up, fellas? Here, let me get this banner off the screen. A little bit pretentious there. Let me describe what I just did, then we'll get to the subject matter at hand, which is not notology, but this is a classic one-handed knot. Let me give you the grip here. Here's the grip. Take a screenshot if you need it. I don't know how to describe that in words. So to make this work, your hand, once you've got the grip, bends downward at the wrist, and then the first two fingers clip the rope that's nearest to your body. So I'm gonna bend down and I'm gonna clip the rope nearest to my body with the first two fingers. And then those two fingers are going to pull through uh, what is the loop on my wrist. It'll kind of shake off like this. And that's what makes the one-handed knot. This is the traditional method that I learned from. I learned it from the Abbott's Encyclopedia of Rope Tricks. We'll talk about that. And then what I've added to it is tossing the rope in the air. It'll create some centrifugal force as it falls down. And you can catch into the grip and hit the desk. We need more we need more space for activities. You can catch the rope as it falls down. The centrifugal force brings the end up, and that more or less is my handling for the one-handed rope knot. <clears throat> Maybe I'll do a few more rope knots as we discuss what we're gonna do today. The uh Maybe I won't. No, maybe I'll do this one. I'll do this one. So I'm going to introduce you to some of the magicians that have inspired me through my journey for uh, rope magic. There's been several of, of note. Guys like George Sands. Tabari, the French magician. This is a Die Vernon knot, the bow and arrow. That's right. Die Vernon rope magic. Daryl Martinez, maybe the one who inspired me the, rope the most to pick up the braided cotton. Here's the world's fastest shoelace. The world's fastest shoelace. Hey, yeah. Ho, ho. So that's not only uh, visually appealing, but helpful in the mornings. That is, unless the ends go through the loops. But I digress. Maybe we should have left the knot material out. So what I've done is this, I've constructed a little, do we have it ready to go? A little slideshow of how I learned rope magic. We'll get to that in just a second. Let me look at the chat and see uh, who's here, if we have anything pertinent that I need to pay attention to. Ah, it's a good one. I have taught a lot of those knots on the platform before. I've left some links in the description of the video. So if you'd like to go through the archives and learn some of those things, you can do that. We're not going to teach any more of that. I've gone, uh, uh, we're going to have to try harder than that, brother. <laughs> I want to talk about this. I want to talk about this before I get to the subject matter. Upgrades. First and foremost, as you stare at this environment today, it's coming to you in 1080p. Unlike yesterday when it was 720p, and every other day I've done a stream, we're spinning the bucks, we're upgrading the quality, and thank you StreamYard for, you know, hammering at home for us. But hopefully you guys can see us. Let me make sure you can hear me a little bit better. Look, there's a knot. I won't, we don't need to discuss that. 
And tomorrow, I'm expecting a new addition to the house as we eliminate the uh, iPhone as a camera. This is the this is the view that I've been using as the close-up camera, and I don't think it's adequate. I see a little, like, you know, tracers and things, so I've ordered, uh, well, it doesn't matter what I've ordered. <laughs> it should be much better than what we have, and for today's stream, we're going to stick here for the majority of the rope magic, and that's the name of that tune. Hope you enjoy that coming soon. Before I get to my subject matter, I want to rewind the history button. Oh, good. Thank you. Good to hear it. Nice. It, it, it will improve more and more. The webcam I've ordered is quite spectacular. <clears throat> so look what I look what I queued up for you guys here. A little bit of 1990s at no extra charge. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Joe, you can see his name there if you need to go watch his channel. I hope he's fine with me sharing this clip. I can't imagine he wouldn't be. This is George Sands performing his rope routine that revolutionized rope magic as we know it. Now, I'm going to talk about the history of some of these things, but I'm going to make it clear that all of it stemmed from the man we're about to watch. And if you look closely, you're about to see some things that you haven't seen with other uh, modern masters. And yes, this will be available post-stream. I'm making a playlist, Trick of Day May 2023. Go watch it later if you need to. So let's just take, I think it's three minutes of George Sands. Watch him uh, do his thing. It is a delight. Here we go. Big screen because I sat right in front of this man and for I don't know how he does it. It's just an amazing thing. Right now he makes his oh, life in the touring 90s. and speaking in front of magician groups all over the world. And uh, I'm privileged to have him on here tonight. Put a big hand for Drive and Whale, the band that just left. George Sandley, ladies and gentlemen. How do you like my act so far? If you're a real magician, you don't need a scissors. I've cut a rope. He was the first one to cut twice. rope with his fingers. Cut this in half. Both of these pieces should be about so long. Actually, this moment. Both of these are a little short. They should both be about Boom. so long. Sounds like watch he's working a frat house. Closely. You watch one end. That's close. You watch the other end. That is not sensational, though. The ends changing places. A modern classic. Here's the inventor of this magic. We'll cut this again. With fingers. And restore it again. Redundant, but good. This is awesome. Different types of knots. It looks like a slip knot. It's a sliding knot. You can slide it wherever you want, but you can change it to a slip knot. Another type of knot is for mountain climbing. How do you tie a knot on top of the mountain so you can climb up? Shoot it up. Yeah, baby. You shoot it up. The mountain slants this way. Shoot it up that way. Yes, sir. You have a very high mountain, throw it all the way up, but make sure of one thing, hit the rope. A review of all the knots I've just shown you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Mr. George Sands. So... <clears throat> You need to stop over here. All right. I hope you enjoyed that blast from the past. 
And uh, someone in the comments mentioned the sand sational rope routine. And George Sands was a master of many forms of rope magic. We'll get to the George Sands stuff in just a moment. Let me start here with first thanking George Sands for being the man who inspired the men that inspired me to learn. And we're talking about all that now as we get to, let's get past this first. Let's get past, obviously, the starting point is the books. Great books will always be the best foundation. You can find most of what I'm talking about in the Encyclopedia of Rope Magic for Magicians, Rope Tricks for Magicians. Stuart James compiled this hundreds of pages. And uh, you can probably find this at your public library, even your online public library. So if you go online and look at magic books, that one's probably waiting on you today. Then we have Harlan Tarbell, who penned the Tarbell Course in Magic. And there's seven volumes of this. I think every volume has a rope magic uh, section in it. Harlan Tarbell was the master of ropes. And uh, these are my recommended reading resources. So moving forward here, uh, this is the guy that really opened my eyes and got me started on rope magic, Daryl Martinez. And if I were to recommend just one resource for anyone to learn rope magic, it would be Daryl's Expert Rope Magic Made Easy. It's a three-volume set, and he covers it all. Rope knots, ring and rope, cut and restored rope with scissors, cut and ropes with fingers, professor's nightmare, and everything in between. Now, I had the luxury of learning this from a poster. That's what you see pictured to the left. I would hazard a guess this is not a bad way to learn this subject matter and maybe a modern uh, ma magic company. I think Murphy's might have the rights to this stuff. Could consider re-releasing Daryl's Great White Rope Routine in poster form. It's an accessible way to learn a lengthy routine without having to pause the DVD and such. And maybe I'm the only one who thinks so, but uh, maybe uh, not. I don't know. You can, you can, you can let Murphy's know. Send him a note. Ah, here we are. George Sands. This is the routine you just saw. Rope sational. And I did a little researching because that's what I do when I do these things. I research it. And he first published this in, if I'm not mistaken, the early 1960s. The book you see is the Improved Rope Sational. It was published in 1971. I could not find the 1960s book to put on this stream. So if anyone has uh, uh, access to this book published in the 60s, I'd be curious about it. The George Sand Rope material. I learned his stuff from a VHS tape back in the day. And I can imagine that this DVD series is those tapes just repurposed for DVD form. George's son, and George has left us, so it's his son that is uh, offering this material. You can find him. I think it's Alan Sands, Alan Sands Magic. And I think for like 35 bucks, you get the PDF books and you get the video files. So, you know, if you want to learn from the giant whose shoulders we stand upon, go learn from George Sands. His son has the goods. Here's some modern classics for you. Tabari, the French expert. This guy blew my mind back in the day on the world's greatest magicians. And then the modern treatise, probably the best concise resource for the material that I'm really discussing today is Richard Sanders Fiber Optics. And now he has the extended version. It's 83,000 things you can do with a piece of rope. And now there's ring stuff with it too. So you could consider those options if you've already covered the basics and want to move forward. And then lastly, and this is mainly what you're about to see, is this guy's work. I say this guy. The routine that I really use is a variant of a Bruce Allen routine. And David clearly credits that on Slide of Dave 2. And this is where I learned rope magic, at least with the rope and a ring as you're about to see it. And then on the Ridiculous series, which has all of Dave's commercial stuff, including his full show where he does a little uh, ring and rope magic. So this is all of the credits that led up to the effect you're about to see, the trick a day may trick two. Now, as I've noted before, I'm trying to make minor improvements to the magic that I'm offering the world. Today, this improvement or modification comes in the form of just a simple pocket management alternative. For me, when I do this ring and rope, it's quite often three pockets. I have a ring in one pocket, 
I have the short piece in a same pocket, but a separate pocket, and then the rope in another pocket. So I also have other pieces happening here. And I was thinking that if I could carry this in a little pouch, and this is even a pouch that could fit in the small of my back, which would in essence, as a working professional, give me access to my other pockets. And then if I wanted to do something that would play a little bit bigger, I could just reach here and take this thing out and get busy with the routine you're about to see. So that's my uh, growth today. We've learned something already. <laughs> so we'll be using, I, I normally start this with a uh, with the knot sequence, that's, I'm already out of place. Normally, I've already done something like this. I, I'm, I'm doing the magic shoelace, and generally, I'll, I'll hand it to a child. I step on the rope and give the I give the child the knot, and it disappears in their hand. Then I segue to phase two, which uses the solid gold ring, and that's what I offer you today for trick a day May. Yeah, it is solid gold. I did. I chrome plated this one to protect the gold, but it is solid. We'll do the same thing with the piece of braided cotton, a solid band of both. And beginning the effect is a puzzle. So it's not as much of a magic trick as it is a puzzle. The puzzle being how to remove the ring from the rope. And the conundrum is you cannot untie the untie the ends. So removing the ring from, yeah, from the rope without untying the ends. Alternatively, alternatively, you could put the ring back on the rope. That looks something like this. So that puzzle requirement works either way. And to do either one of those, here's what I'm going to suggest. A little imagination. Yeah, a little imagination goes a long way. Mm -hmm. You can just pretend, you could just pretend to cut the rope. And in doing that, it makes removing the ring somewhat elementary. And as you watch this, you'll begin to understand the trick is much less about removing the ring and more so about hiding the, uh, the extra ends. So the question is, where do I hide them? Well, for that, we answer the French magician Tabari. I keep one in the middle. Yeah, I keep one in the center of the middle. That is in number three. I keep the uh, fourth in next to the bottom in the eighth parsec. That is in number four. From here, once you have the four ends, it's like simple math. You can take the big loop, you double it in half. It's this that gives you the illusion of two ropes being the same size. A pretty good illusion. And that's where you want to be. So when it goes back to one, it looks more like a, more like a magic trick. Well, the only thing I have left to offer is if you are going to try this at home, don't forget when you're done to take those extra ends, um, take them off the rope. You want to hide them somewhere convenient so that no one can catch you out. Just, hey, don't forget to bring your magic scissors. That'll let you bring the illusion back to the beginning, which is actually the end of the trick. Hey, that's the Siegfried. Hey, that's the Roy. And that has been your trick of the day, May, trick number two. I hope you liked it. Hey, if you did, if you did like it, this is where you hit the like button on the screen. It only takes a second to click it. And even if you didn't like it, go ahead and click it so we're not both disappointed. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Tim Askins, thank you for your kind approbation. And John as well. Thank you, both of you. Now, I'm not done yet. As I tend to do, I like to leave a few minutes at the end of these streams, which, um, look at this, a loose 20. That's my goal for these things. Let me get a couple more pieces of rope here. We're coming in at a loose 20, which is where I want to be, but I promised Gary Henderson, current channel favorite. I know. How could I not, you know? <laughs> he sent me the Rubenstein book. <laughs> You're getting it. <clears throat> I promised Gary that I would do my best to explain a handling for the professor's nightmare account. Now, if there's anything anyone else would like me to do or talk about uh, concerning rope magic or anything else moving forward, this is a good time to ask. But if you're not familiar with the professor's nightmare, first let me explain. It's an illusion kind of like what I created before, but it's with three ropes. And one's medium and one's a long one, and then one's a kind of short one. And 
works this way. If you even all the ends at the top, you can get all the ends even at the top. And then if you double the loop at the bottom, now the ends look the same from the loops. See how they all look the same? The loops are the same size and the ends are the same size. So it looks like all the ropes, first world problems, get, get a good view here. It should look all like all the ropes, the short, that's actually the short rope. And it appears to be the same size as the medium rope. And that one appears to be the same size as the long rope. Now, they're not actually the same. It's just an illusion. You can break the illusion, the snap of the fingers, and the ropes will go right back where they started. That's the long one. That's the medium. That's the short. That's the professor's nightmare. We thank Bob Carver, the wonderful Georgia magician for that years ago. Man, the puns today, y'all, the puns. All right, I'm not going to explain the professor's nightmare. I'm just going to explain the count. So let me get through this. Uh, even the ends at the top. This is my preferred handling and my presentation on this, which is this thing here, right, that gets us to this moment where they appear to be the same. Now, to explain this count, and I'm going to have to just do some light exposure. If you're a muggle or opposed to magic secrets, this is where you close your eyes. I'll tell you when you can open them. So there's our secret condition, right? One of the ropes is medium. We're going to count that one first. It's going to be pinched by the thumb and first finger. I'm going to pull it out and then move it to the right. So the idea is I want to count each rope and give it a tug. Okay, so that's our medium rope. Start there. Pinch it, pull it up slightly, and then to the right, tug and drop. Now, as we come back to count the second one, we're going to do the switch. This rope is pinched by the thumb and first finger. It's going to get placed in the crevice, the crack, the crease of the thumb and the first finger of the left hand. So as I come back here to supposedly count rope two, this goes here and the first and second fingers clip the other two ropes at that point. So I'm coming back, clip, place, clamp, clip. Now the clipped part gets pulled up. So I'm going to pull, and that's the that's this part. So I pull that up, and then I stick my finger in between the loop below. So I pull it up, stick the finger in the loop below, clamp here so it doesn't separate, and then pull this to the right. It's a That's a lot of explanation to do what is, in a sense, this. That's one rope, the short rope, back, switch, clip, and the second rope, which is the medium rope, and now we're home free. And I hope that makes sense. You know, from there, you can do a lot of things. Uh, I, I just bring one of the long ends up uh, and do the snap and bring them back the way they were before. Uh, Dan Garrett's Professor's Daydream is a great handling. Hey, I saw Bill Goodwin at the Senior Tour Magic Convention. He had a handling of the, the Daydream that is a visual, a visual change of that knot. That was so good. You might want to research the penumbra if you're into that. And Gary, if that's not clear enough, let me know and we'll try again. Uh, and yeah, trying it live. All right, let's see, is there any more? I know, how can I not? Is there any more puns anyone wants to get in? <clears throat> John, you're over my head there. A pontente, I have to go look that up. Did I just say a bad word? Thank you, Tim. Oh. So that you'll find the professor's nightmare in a lot of modern text, a lot of classic texts. Yeah, that's a good one too. The spin, the convincing spin. Thank you, Cat Cat. And always a pleasure to see you in the house. So uh, yeah, this is day two, trick of day May, rope magic. What will day three be? I won't know till I create it after this video. I'm, I'm doing this on a daily basis within a 24 hour time span, taking the piece of magic that I already know and love, figuring out a way that I can do it better or maybe improve the moment. Today I had some speed bumps, go figure. It's a brand new routine. There will be those. There will be times where we make great magic this month. I hope you'll choose to stick through and see what happens as we progress to day three. 
I'm not going to sell the Warpo trick. He has agreed to do a tutorial for my members area, and that, I promise, is coming. But uh, I have been in procrastination mode getting to the French Quarter lately. It's my fault y'all don't have it yet. Oh, John, I'm in deep. <laughs> um, Matthew, the short answer is no. But maybe later this month, I'll return to rope magic and talk about that. I will mention I did teach a simple method of cut and restored rope on a recent live. It's been within the last couple months. If you're willing to go down my rabbit hole of lives, you might be able to find it. And of course, in the Discord, and hey, if you're a channel member, you have access to our Discord lives. I'm happy to help you there and go through uh, any details at all. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate you for not participating. I do not like Penn and Teller. I love them. Kind of like God, Godfather parents, but they don't know that. They don't know me. You're welcome. And then we also have Daryl Martinez, who teaches it expertly. We talked about Daryl, right? You know, everyone just, we all just go back and uh, watch Daryl. And he'll teach you expertly uh, how to do that and a great many other things. All right, guys. So, look, I'm already over time. Seven minutes over. Wearing out my welcome. I'm here all month. I better wrap this up. If you have any comments, you can just leave them below. Like this thing if you did or like it if you didn't. I'm trying to generate some algorithmic love. Hopefully, I'll see you with better quality tomorrow. It depends on when this webcam shows up, but uh, it'll be a standard Wednesday live. We'll go a little longer. I got some great giveaways for some international students, and uh, we'll do a little bit more just overall magic love. I'll see you guys tomorrow at 4 p.m. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, yeah, that's going to be ciao for now. Au revoir.